ladies and gentlemen, to Longbox Chronicles Month here on Reaction and Review. Tonight, guys, I'm closing out Longbox Chronicles Month with something a little bit special. You see, this entire month I have done uh, official comic book adaptations. This time I'm doing a movie that comes right out and tells you that it is a parody, and the only reason why I can cover it is because it still has the name of what it's parodying. Now, this movie came out in 2010. The title is Batman Triple X, a porn parody. Now, I know that over a year ago I said I'm never doing another porno film for this series, but I've heard good things about this one. Good things about the writing in this one. Now, I totally understand that talking about good fucking writing in porno is not saying much, but um, from everything I, I have read, if you, if you find this thing on DVD... There is an option to watch it with all of the sex scenes cut, at which point it's just all of the uh, acting and dialogue bits, and at that point it just turns into a loving... I mean, it turns into sort of like a love note to the 1960s Batman show, which, frankly, to me, is all positives. I just want to know if this writing is any good, and hell, I, I, might, even, I might even critique the sex scenes. Why not? Um... So yeah, I'm really curious if this thing is going to be in in any if this thing's going to be in any way watchable. So yeah, it's time for me to dive into a, another porno film. Let's hope this one's not as scarring as Boku no Pico was. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Batman Triple X, a porn parody. Okay, guys, I just kind of want to mention this right now. Um, <laughs> This fucking, this fucking, like, Riddler costume is spot on. Looks really good. I never thought I'd be coupling the costumes in a fucking porno, but god damn it, that is exactly what I'm fucking doing. Wow. Okay, guys, you know, this, now this sex scene would probably be, be really sexy if the Riddler wasn't still in his goddamn costume while he's fucking his captive. It just seems kind of... Off, it just sort of seems, I guess, a bit, you know, off-putting to see a guy who's still in, who's still in the entire costume, just basically with the front pulled down, you know, big enough for his dick to pop out. It just seems a little goofy just seeing the Riddler screwing, you know, a random woman. I don't know, perhaps maybe it's just me, but god damn it, it just seems creepy as shit. Alright, now guys, I honestly am not exactly a porno expert, but I don't think it's normal for any for any one sex scene in a given porno to run damn near 20 minutes. This one is now just ending, so, uh, yeah, and still, the very fact that the Riddler spent the entire time in the full costume kind of ruined any and all of the supposed sexiness which would have come from it. Oh, and Batman and Robin's costumes look look, you know, pretty good, too. Again, I'm kind of shocked. I'm, you know, complimenting the costumes in a porno film, but God damn it, that, that honestly is the hand I have been dealt here, guys. Okay, guys, so we have this woman who's working for the Riddler. She has drugged Batman and is now having her, you know, way with him. Effectively, she's raping Batman for all, for all intents and purposes. Which means, I get to say something I never thought I'd ever say in this fucking series. This woman is literally raping my childhood, and goddammit, I find it just a little bit fucking creepy. So, let me see if I got this straight. Barbara Gordon goes from being brunette to blonde when she becomes Batgirl. I totally understand that that is a minor nothing to fucking bitch about, but god damn it, I'm going to bitch about it, because it doesn't make any sense. And just as a note, I really do do like how they read, how, how they fucking do the whole bat, how they do the old, like, 1960s Batman, like, wall, like, climbing sequences. That's really fucking cool. Okay. After just witnessing uh, a sex scene involving the Joker banging two random women, I want to make this point abundantly clear. I never want to see another clown's cock as long as I live. That was 
quite possibly one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen. Oh, and now Batman and Batgirl are going to get it on. Well, shit, that sounds like it might be kind of promising. Why the fuck is Joker holding on to a phaser? I am not fucking kidding you guys. Joker's holding on to a Star Trek phaser. I'm going to assume that the people who made this film, while working on this, were probably also working on a Star Trek porno, and they just had the phaser, like, you know, like, lying around. I will say, it is a very loyal-looking, looking phaser. If this were a Star Trek porno, I'd be able to compliment that. But considering it's Batman, it seems ridiculously out of place. I can't believe I'm bitching about the props in a fucking porno, but again, that is what this film has dealt me, guys. Seriously? Fucking thing ends on a cliffhanger? <laughs> okay. No matter how much I want to complain, that was a nice way to end it. Holy shit. Okay. <sighs> Alright. Let's talk about Batman Triple X, a porn parody, shall we? Alright. <clears throat> First of all, before I get into any of the details here, I do want to preface this by saying that I am not a porn expert. I'm not exactly a porn aficionado. I barely watch porn, so I don't really know what are considered high standards for porn. I will tell you that out of the few porno films I've seen, at least the ones that actually attempt to go for a story, go for acting, you know, what little acting and story you can get out, out of a porno, this one is nowhere near... Actually, no, this one's probably the second best I've seen. Second best. Now, I think that's probably because um, of the subject matter. See, I've been a fan of Batman ever since I was old enough to pick up a goddamned comic book. And the very fact that never in my lifetime did I ever hyper-sexualize these characters in just such a way makes something like this ridiculously off-putting to me. Now, okay, yes, the actresses who play Catwoman and Batgirl are ridiculously sexy. However, the very fact that Batgirl's got this really high, high-pitched voice, which just seems a little bit creepy. And the fact that during her sex scene with uh, Robin, she was ridiculously in character and kept calling Robin's name. That right there was just enough to turn me off a little bit. That, that seriously just bordered on creepy. Catwoman, also ridiculously in character, spends almost the entire sex scene purring like a fucking cat and meowing during the entire sex scene. I'm sorry... Some people might find that sexy. I don't. That was just bizarre. Speaking of, speaking of bizarre, the very concept of Riddler having a sex scene, Joker having a sex scene, all that kind of shit, my brain is not ready to process that kind of fucking goofiness, okay? Um, so... In terms of uh, just is this a is this a good porno? I can say I have seen better, but I haven't seen many many better. I mean, you know, the sex scenes here are good. They would probably have been better if I wasn't such a big Batman fan and almost feel as if this somehow violates my childhood in its own bizarre little way. Um, but still, in terms of writing, I do want to talk about the writing. The writing in this thing. The actual story, the dialogue, it really is a pure love letter to the 1960s Batman show. I mean, this thing has the same kind of cheesy fucking dialogue you would have gotten from any episode of the Adam West series. Um, and, and in fact, while I'm also talking about the positives, I do want to talk about the costuming. I know I mentioned it earlier, the fact that the Riddler's costume is absolutely spot on. Everybody's costume is absolutely perfect. The only changes which which were made were changes that were just there to work around copyright, such as changing out changing out the bat emblem on Batman's chest to three X's, or changing the R or changing the R insignia on Robin's chest to just an X, or modifying or or modifying the bat emblem on Batgirl's uh, 
out on Batgirl's chest just so that way it doesn't look like the one from DC Comics. Doing all of that was just fine. And if you looked past those minor changes, which were there, again, just, just simply to work around copyright, the costumes looked identical to what was in the Adam West show, which at some points it almost, you, you could almost be fooled into thinking that they probably raided the fucking wardrobe from, from that show to make this. Um, that really is how, that is really how lovingly accurate these costumes are. Um... Which again, for a porno film, the very the very fact that I that I have to mention costumes is not normal, all right. But yeah, the costumes in this thing are absolutely amazing, and that's probably why the sex scenes are so creepy because everybody fucks in costume minus Catwoman. Catwoman is the only one who strips totally nude, including her in, including her mask and her little you know cat ears. So you know she's the only one who doesn't look anything like her character by the by the time she's really getting into her scene. Otherwise, Batgirl still has on her cape and and her cowl. In fact, the cape actually seems to get in to, to actually get in the way at times, which then leads to her giggling, which almost almost makes makes the scene lovable in, in its own sort of way otherwise riddler like riddler is fucking in you know full costume joker is fucking in full costume batman and robin are both basically just taking off their you know like tights and they still have on their you know like upper body like shirt pieces as well as all well batman always is wearing the fucking cape robin takes it off prior to every scene i don't know why i don't care why it's none of my business but the very fact that all of them are fucking while still in costume kind of kind of makes this a little bit weird for me as a Batman fan. Now, I, I talked about costumes. Let's talk about the sets. The sets look really good. Now, mind you, you can clearly tell that everything here was shot in the same fucking warehouse. But they were able to make it all work in in their in you know like their own sort of way. They were able to take this one warehouse and god damn it, they turned it into everything. They fucking turned it into Wayne Manor. They turned it into the Joker's hideout. They turned it into the fucking like disco like disco dan like like dance club where where Batman is drugged. They do all of this and they do it well. In fact, hell, the sets are built amazingly. The one thing it's missing, um, I want to talk about cinematography. Along the lines of, like, porno cinematography, it's good. However, when they're doing the, like, story-based segments, it was missing one thing. One big thing that is a fucking necessity if you're going to do a parody of the 1960s Bat, like, Batman show, and that's Dutch angles. Had not a single Dutch angle in the entire fucking film. And, um, I understand... Okay, now, first of all, for those of you who don't know, Dutch angles are those shots where the camera's, like, tilted a little bit. So that way then, just basically inside of them, the camera's, like, framed like this. So that way everything looks like it's, like, lopsided. They did that in the 1960s show with every single scene which strictly involved villains. I'm not kidding. To show that they were crooked. That joke sucks, but goddammit, it's true. They didn't have any Dutch angles in this, and if they would have put in at least a couple, a couple real like, noticeable ones, I would probably have laughed my ass off. I mean, it was still, you know, pretty good, all things fucking considered, but that would have made it even better. So yeah, so yeah, essentially, the cinematography's good. Oh wait, there are also a couple of shots where the camera's pointed too low. And you can see the studio lights overhead. Again, I totally understand that I'm bitching that I'm that, I, that I'm bitching about technical issues in a porno, but goddamn it, that is kind of sort of what I'm known for is bitching about the technical stuff. And it's not normal to see stage lighting in your you know film. Again, that's probably common common in porno, but I haven't watched enough to know, okay? I haven't seen enough and really analyzed enough of them to go, oh, yeah, you know, I guess that fucking stage lighting's normal. No, I don't know, and really, it, again, I don't care. Um, I do want to talk about sound. Excuse me. See, sound is sort of a bit of an issue here for two reasons. Number one... Uh, one thing I have noticed in the few with the few porno films I've watched is they all have that really cheesy sound like fucking like soundtrack to it, and this 
doesn't have that. In fact, you will hear music play at the start of almost every sex scene. It'll carry on for maybe like 30 seconds to possibly a minute, and then it completely dies out, and then you only hear the moaning and the groaning and, you know, like squeaking of chairs and squeaking of beds and people clanging, like clanging and banging shit in the background. That's probably one of the reasons why music is always incorporated into these films, besides also being a really good way of like setting the mood for the viewer, is also to basically cover up all of the unneeded background noise, which you can't totally like cut out, like cut out and post, okay? So the fact that so the fact that the music is almost totally non, you know, existent it kind of plays against the film's strengths, okay? I mean, it's like, if they would have thrown in maybe, maybe oh, I don't know, like some kind of like porno-ish sounding like Batman music, again, again, you know, akin to the 1960s show, just kind of keeping with the mood. You basically take music which sounds similar to that, and you just kind of sort of, you know, like sex it up a little bit, and then you use that in the fucking backgrounds. I really think that it would have been great. But they didn't do that. Instead... Like I said, you know, you only get like 35, maybe. I mean, you, you only get like you only get like 35 seconds, possibly like a minute of music. Some of it is also really quiet, even even when it constantly plays, and then it just totally cuts out. And then you can hear people, and you can hear people like behind the fucking camera, like shuffling around and like like shuffling around and banging shit. It really seems very unpolished and very you know unprofessional, which again is really kind of a negative here. I mean, again, I'm bitching about technical shit in a porno, but goddammit, I'm going to. Uh, props. There's minus, you know, the sets, and minus anything which is on the costumes. There's one prop in the entire film, and it's a Star Trek phaser, and I think I've already spoken plenty about the fucking Star Trek phaser. Um, God, what else is there to really talk about? Well, I haven't talked about acting yet. I've covered everything else except acting. Um, well, porno films are known for having really bad acting. This thing is no fucking exception. The one person who turns in, who, who turns in a showing which is in any way good is Ron fucking Jeremy, who has a cameo in one, in one, in one of the Batman wall, like, uh, wall climbing segments. He's there for maybe like a minute. He, or, well, like, a little, actually, it's a little bit less than a minute. He turn and he turns in a fantastic showing for that, you know, like, for that, you know, like, small, small time he's speaking. And it really was a nice little, you know, like, callback to the old, you know, Adam West show where they would have celebrities popping out of the windows during the, you know, wall climbing segments. I mean, shit, I honestly have to, you know, praise them on that. Uh, otherwise, though, the acting here is, well, the acting here is, you know, okay, it definitely matches the fucking, like, it, it, or rather, it almost matches the Adam West show in style, except for the guy playing Commissioner Gordon. The guy who is playing Commissioner Gordon apparently has never acted a day in his fucking life and does not know how to read dialogue and also emote with said dialogue. It comes off really, really poorly. Um... In the end, am I able to recommend this film? Almost. You see, this film really caters to two audiences. The first one are people just looking for, who just want to watch it out of sheer morbid curiosity. Which is why I watched it. I was really curious exactly how the fuck you turned Batman in, into a porno. I was wondering if it could still be sexy. Um, and the answer is... Yeah, a little bit, but it seriously is not sexy enough for, for me to really want to, you know, like, get, like, get, you know, like, way into it. I mean, yeah, sure, we do have, we, 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 we do have a couple, of, like, sexy actresses, but, again, it's those fucking costumes. It's the costumes, and it is the, you know, like, lack of music. It really just doesn't work for me, okay? So there is, so there is that audience. The people who want to watch this thing just because... They heard that there is a Batman porno, and God damn it, they're curious if, it, if it's any good. And there's a second audience who just has a huge fetish for Batman. If And if that is the case, you're going to love this. As warped and as disturbing as you are, you are going to probably adore this thing. As for me, um, well, I was curious about it. I am happy that I finally got to watch it. Um, but I'm probably never going to watch it again. Because, frankly, if I want, you know, because, frankly, if I want to see a couple of these actresses again, 
I can probably find other things which they've been in where they're not dressed as Batgirl or Catwoman, and it might be a little bit less off-putting to me, okay? So, you know, there, so, you know, there is that. Um, otherwise, if you guys are really curious, what the hell? You can probably fucking bit torrent this thing. After all, I, I was able to fucking bit, I was able to bit torrent it, so... It's really not that, it's really not that difficult to find, so if you're really curious, go ahead, download it, give it a watch, but I cannot, but I cannot guarantee if it's going to be something which you are going to openly and actively enjoy, okay? I just, I am just not able to promise that, so basically, watch this at your, at your, at your own risk, because I cannot guarantee if you're going to enjoy it or not. I honestly am kind of sort of on the fence about it. It it was good, but it honestly was not good enough for me to give it to give it a second viewing. Um, again, though, that though was going purely from purely from a film critic stand fucking like standpoint. It's not worth the second viewing to me, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. With that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.